Dinosaur Hunters, Chapter 3. Here come the Dinosaur Hunters. English dinosaur hunters discovered many new kinds of dinosaurs. Their discoveries made newspaper headlines. People wanted to know everything about these extinct giants. Artists painted pictures of what they thought dinosaurs looked like. Sculptors built life-size dinosaur statues. For New Year's Eve in 1853, a scientist sent party invitations to other scientists. When the guests showed up, they found a table set for 22 people inside the body cavity of an almost finished statue of an iguanodon. Word of the giant fossil bones spread quickly. By the 1850s, dinosaur fever had hit America too. At this time, new railroad beds were being dug out west. Prospectors were digging for gold in California and Colorado. With all that digging going on, fossils were uncovered nearly every day. The western United States was a dinosaur hunter's dream. Like cowboys, early dinosaur hunters in America were rugged. They loved adventure. They carried chisels and rock hammers. They also carried rifles and bowie knives. The west was a wild and dangerous place. Dinosaur hunters often lived off the land. They shot their food each day. They had to know where to find water in the desert. They drove stubborn pack mules and clumsy wagons. Dinosaur hunters called the place they worked a dig. They had to figure out how to get huge bones out of solid rock with just picks, shovels, and ropes. When they dug up the bones, dinosaur hunters sometimes wrapped them in cloth or in flour sacks. They put the bones in their wagons or packed them onto the backs of their mules. Then they headed for the nearest railroad. They shipped the bones back east to fossil collectors and museums. Two of the most famous bone collectors were Dr. Edward Cope and Dr. Othaniel Marsh. These two paleontologists started out as friends, but soon they became enemies. Each one wanted all the dinosaur bones for himself. Both Cope and Marsh found lots of bones. Each one wanted to be the first to show off his dinosaur skeletons. When Cope found the bones of an Elasmosaurus, he was in such a hurry to show off the skeleton that he put the head of the tail head on the tail end. Marsh made sure that everyone knew about Cope's big mistake, but later he made one of his own. He put the skull of another dinosaur on top of an Apatosaurus skeleton. He called this new dinosaur Brontosaurus. His mistake was not corrected for almost 100 years. In the 1870s, railroad workers began finding big bones at Como Bluff, Wyoming. The place was so loaded with fossils that one trapper built himself a cabin out of dinosaur bones. There's Cope and Marsh. Cope and Marsh heard about all these bones. Both men headed west and set up digs. Cope accused Marsh of stealing fossils from his dig. Marsh accused Cope of the same thing, but Marsh wanted to make sure that Cope did not get any of his fossils, so he had his workers set up dynamite, and he blew up his own dig. Other scientists were ashamed of the way Cope and Marsh fought. They thought it gave paleontologists a bad name, but they had to admit one thing. The bone war led to the discovery of tons and tons of dinosaur bones. Marsh and his team of dinosaur hunters were the first to find Apatosaurus, Stegosaurus, and Triceratops. If you visit Yale University, University's Peabody Museum, you can see Marsh's dinosaurs. You can see many of Cope's dinosaurs at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City.